Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 town clerk's election here in Arlington, or the debate for that election, excuse me. I'm James Milan from ACMI, and we are presenting, obviously, the coronavirus version of a debate um, with our three candidates, hopefully comfortably ensconced in their own homes and um, ready to get going. Um, obviously, this is new territory for all of us, so we will count on your patience if any technical glitches arise, but we are going to proceed forward as we usually would. Um, so joining me are those candidates who in the order in which they appear on the ballot are Julie Brazil and Janice Weber and Patty Brennan Sautel. Thank you all for joining us. I just wanted to uh, very quickly go over what the uh, debate, how the debate will be structured. Um, we will start with opening uh, statements from each of the candidates that will last one minute each. Uh, the order for both opening and closing statements were, was randomly chosen. Uh, we'll then have three rounds of questions. The first round is, is, is one question posed to all three candidates, the same question, and they will each have two minutes to respond. Then we will go into section number two, in which I will pull out randomly three selected questions from this uh, handy dandy little mason jar and ask each of the candidates uh, to, uh, or direct each of those questions to one of the candidates. So each of the candidates will answer first uh, to one of those questions and they will have two minutes for their answer and then each of the other candidates will have a one minute rebuttal opportunity. Um, once we're finished with those three questions, the third section will involve the candidates themselves asking question a question each of the other two. Um, the person who asks the question will have 30 seconds to frame that question, so it's not a speech. Um, and uh, then each of the two respondents will have two minutes, and finally the person who asked the question will have an opportunity to respond with one minute. We'll then go into the closing statements, which as I mentioned, will be one minute each as well. So without further ado, I would like to uh, say that the order for the opening, uh, again, randomly chosen, will be Janice Weber going first and then followed by uh, Patty Sautel and finally Julie Brazil. So uh, I'd like to get going on that right away. You have one minute for your opening statement, Janice Weber. Hi, my name is Janice Weber. I'm currently the assistant town clerk in Arlington. I have worked for the town for 23 years, 14 as the assistant registrar and the last nine as the assistant town clerk. I grew up in Arlington. We moved here in 1954 and I've lived here um, except for the first seven years we were married. We lived in Somerville, then we moved back to Arlington. I enjoy working where I am. It's been hectic because of this coronavirus, but I've been at work every day this week and I've worked sometimes till 10 o'clock at night because there's, there's just so much more to do than there was before. I hope to update the clerk's office as I've hoped for before, but as I've only been the assistant, I haven't been able to do it. And um, a lot of people want us to do online um, online transfers, which we can't do until we have permission from the treasurers and other offices. But I hope to get more um, updating done if I am elected, and thank you. Thank you very much. Patty. Thank you, James. I'm running for town clerk because I truly have a passion for technology and public service. I'm currently a technology project manager for the town of Arlington, where I've worked since 2009. I will use my municipal, financial, technology, and operations experience to make a difference for the people in Arlington. Other candidates are going to talk about moderni modernization ideas. However, I'm the only candidate who has actual experience modernizing municipal business practices. I also have operations experience, including managing large scale flu clinics in multiple locations and with hundreds of volunteers. I have the most financial experience having managed operating budgets and capital requests. There are so many opportunities to improve customer engagement whether it's online transactions, a social media presence, or just being out in the community. And I have experience doing all of that. I have a clear vision for where we need to go to provide technology, information, and education to our community. As I said in my candidate Thank profile, you. my goal is to balance that small town customer service with strong technology. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thanks. And Julie Brazil. Thank you first to ACMI for holding this virtual debate and to Patty and Janice for joining in. 
I'd also like to thank the viewing audience for participating in our local election by watching to learn about the candidates and then voting on or before Saturday, June 6th. I'm running to build a sense of partnership and to make the clerk's office a place where people feel they are working with town hall. If you like visiting in person to ask a question, or if you prefer to email or file a form online, you should choose what works for you. I know people want more timely information about town meeting candidates, and I'm looking forward to making that happen. And I'm excited to collaborate with other town employees to upgrade, streamline, and integrate to make the office more efficient. I'm Julie Brazil, and I'm grateful for this opportunity to share my ideas. Thank you very much. And we are going to proceed for right into uh, the first section, which is, again, one question posed to all three candidates. The order in which uh, you will respond is the order in which you appear on the ballot. That, set, that saying that uh, Julie Brazil will go first, then Janice Weber, and finally Patty Sautel. The question is simple and direct. What makes you the best candidate for this job? Great and question. Please, excuse me, I'm sorry. If you can please be very specific. Thank you. Okay, so um, I have a long track record of managing as a volunteer uh, complex projects in Arlington like the town survey. That's given me um, the opportunity to collaborate with a lot of other volunteers and, and staff in town hall to make a project of that magnitude happen. Uh, coordinating volunteer hours, working with the finance committee or town staff to find additional funding when survey software costs rose unexpectedly. Um, that work on the survey in particular has given me a lot of insight, uh, reading the comments from residents um, on what they need, what they hope for, um, what confuses them even about our town government and how we, um, how town meeting works and, uh, and their ability to understand how to internet, interact with their town meeting representatives. That's very confusing for a lot of people. Um, so I'm coming to this with a great desire to increase um, public engagement. That's been a, a strong motivator for me uh, the past 20 something years I've been volunteering in Arlington. Um, so I have a vision uh, for the kind of office I think Arlington deserves. The clerk's office is, uh, is a place that a lot of people in Arlington interact with. Um, it brings a lot of people to town hall or to that part of the town website. And I think it's important that we be, um, we be uh, proactive in the information that we get out to people and not simply reactive. Um, uh, so I think we can do a lot of work to upgrade uh, the processes in the office, always focusing on putting uh, the needs of residents first. Um, I think it's important that, um, that we uh, take the information from residents that we understand from uh, things like the survey and put it to best use. Thank you very much. Janice. Well, I think experience counts for any job and the town clerk's office especially um, thrives on the experience. I've, I've been the assistant registrar for 14 years, as I said, which uh, no other town clerk has ever been before. So I know that department pretty well. And I definitely like to um, have the people come into the office. It's nice talking to them. They like to be here. They haven't been there for years. Even on the phone, we have conversations about the town. So I think the town clerk's office is very close to the people in town and the residents who lived here before. And I think we're welcoming to them and we try to help them in any way we can. I get questions all day long on the telephone and emails and we give the answers that we can. And we try to help everyone all the time. And I think that it is welcoming. And I also uh, agree with both of the other girls about the upgrading of the, um, of the technology in the office, but that's something that has to, a lot of it has to go through capital planning because of the cost and some of it can only be done through um, the agreement with the treasurer's office and things like that. And it, it costs a lot of money for the citizens to pay for their online um, payments. So it's cheaper to buy a stamp actually. And we have, um, we have upgraded, uh, especially the dog licenses and the um, birth certificates and man, um, death certificates are online. And we try to, and we do keep up with the um, website as much as possible 
um, on the end that we have to do. And the girls in the office are there's two new girls, so they're just learning uh, the ropes now, but they're doing a great job. And as I said, I've been there since the lockdown, and now they're coming in one day at a time to do some of the work that needs to get done for the absentee ballots because this is a tremendous uh, job this time because of the um, amount of people who obviously are voting absentee. And as I said, it's that, very Thank nice. you. Sorry, we're run out of time. Thank you very much, Janice. And on, and on to you, Patty. Thank you, James. So as I mentioned in my opening remarks, um, I am a technology project manager. It's clear that we need change in the town clerk's office and that is going to be largely technology based. I have implemented successfully online transactions for health and human services, and I will do the same for the town clerk's office. I have the operations, logistics, financial uh, experience. I've done capital projects. I've worked with multiple operating budgets. Um, but I, I wanna say that the next town clerk needs to be very different. You, we need to have somebody who can engage in the community. If you want to know what the residents think, you need to go to them, right? We cannot, as I had stated in my original um, uh, presentation, we cannot be reactive. We should be proactive and out in the community. So that means that if you want to know what the pain points are and the information needs for seniors, go where they are, right? Work with the Council on Aging, the Senior Association, um, work with the senior housing. If you want to know um, the needs of folks that are maybe underrepresented, that means working with those groups, it means working with the housing authority, even things like setting up office hours at the housing authority. The town clerk should be about information and education, right? The same thing is Arlington Eats. What a great opportunity to partner with them. Uh, same thing, set up a, a table and chair, if you will, to provide information and education to the community. So I clearly have the experience on the municipal side more than any of the other candidates for sure. I also have a very clear vision and I will say I've already started uh, a 90 day action plan um, to, to move forward with um, on multiple facets, social media being one of those. Uh, that's just low hanging fruit. It's super easy to get started and provide information to the, to the residents. It's about customer service. Thank you. Thank, and thank you. And we'll move right into section two. Uh, again, a reminder, this is the suspenseful section in that I will now draw the question uh, randomly. The first question is going to be directed initially uh, to Janice Weber, and you will have two minutes to respond. And then uh, Patty will go next and Julie third, uh, each with one minute uh, for rebuttal. So pulling out the first question. Again, directed to you, Janice. Uh, what are your plans uh, for modernizing the clerk's office, either through technology or other means? Well, as I said before, we're, we want online payments for things, but we have to um, get together with the town uh, offices to do that. We can't do that on our own. We've asked for five years uh, for things that we are unable to get. And as it stands now, the citizens have to pay more to to get things online than they would if they put a stamp on an envelope so for the, especially for things like the dog licenses i've already conferred with the uh, treasurer's office about that and i'm welcome to any technology that we can get and i'm going to put a capital in capital planning this year for some um infrastructure that we need um electricity and things like that for the state computers to be put on our desks rather than across the room and it takes time, especially during the elections, to go back and forth to answer the questions at the polling places. So that will be a good fix. And that's a few thousand dollars just to put the electricity into it. But that ha a lot of that, that has to go into capital planning. I've already been told that. And I have over the years asked for different things. And the, the town clerk's office just really needs the money to do a lot of the um, updating is scanning of the old records. A lot of the records have already been uh, done by the state and they've put them on the computer. I think they're back to 1952, but we have, uh, you know, records back to the 1600s that could be scanned in and we could have them on um, microfish and that's what we're hoping to do in the future. And as I said before, I was unable to do that because I wasn't the clerk. So I'm hoping to do that now if, if and when I am elected. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Patty, you have a one minute rebuttal. 
Thank you. So uh, my plans for modernizing are, you know, people talk about digitizing records. Scanning is only half of it. It's what's the upfront um, piece of software. So how do you actually search for a record? If you scan it and you can't search it, it's not really helpful. I have successfully implemented online transactions. I did that eight years ago for health and human services. Um, so I have no doubt that I'll be able to do that. As I said before, we truly need a social media presence. It's about information and education and providing that to the community. Um, I'd also like to set up a kiosk in town hall, kind of like a self-service center. We're all always going to be there at the town clerk's office. However, if there's somebody who just wants to come in for a, a, a quick printout of something or a quick search of something, whether it's a, um, a meeting, when is that meeting taking place? Um, where is it located? So providing uh, that information. I do want to say one thing that Jana said uh, about the transactions being more expensive. That's not true. It's 25 cents for an ACH, which is less than the cost of a scale. Thank you very much. And Julie, you have also one minute. So uh, we're all in agreement that there's a lot of updating um, and technology improvements that we can make in the office. Um, and I have done some research on the solving the problem of digitizing the oldest records, and they do need to be um, they do need to be made uh, searchable. That is a that would be an important part of, of the solution. Um, and, uh, and, and the logistics of a project like that are significant, um, and in terms of being sure that you never lose access um, to them to them if they're being scanned off site, um, if a request comes in. Um, for me. <laughs> as important as the technology is, and we all agree on that, I want to be sure that the, the work all starts um, with the end user, who is the resident. Um, the solutions need to reflect uh, where people are. It can't all just be whizzy. It needs to be um, what people are looking for. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next question is going to be directed first to Patty, and then Julie will go second, and Janice third. And that is, uh, what do you see as the primary mission or missions and purpose of the clerk's office, and how do you plan to take a leadership role in accomplishing those? Okay. So I, I think the town clerk's office is one of the most critical roles in town. And I think it's truly the least understood role um, because it is, um, it, it's responsible for your elections, your vital records. It's responsible for town meeting and making sure that warrants get um, uh, you know, filed with, this, with the state. There's community engagement, um, uh, you know, being able to interact with the public, provide technology. Um, you know, the, uh, like I said, community outreach, uh, having social media. So I, I think that I, all of my experiences, my municipal experience is what I will bring to, um, bring to the table. Um, and I think it's going to be important that those skills, like we have the voting equipment, right? The, the clickers at town meeting uses, that RFP is up after this year. So we're going to need somebody that is going to be able to write an RFP and to uh, solicit to get either, you know, re uh, renewing a contract or getting uh, a new vendor for that. So I see this as a multifaceted position um, that you need to have multiple skills, uh, including technology, including leadership. I have managed multiple complex projects that involve millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, so I have worked collaboratively with every single department in this town to successfully change the way that people work, change culture. So I see it as the totality of having operations, logistics, uh, municipal finance, and as well as having that leadership experience. And I have led many projects and successfully um, implemented many projects, whether it was technology or just changing culture, changing the way that people work. Um, so I see it as the bigger picture with many skills. Thank you. Julie, you have one minute rebuttal. So yes, uh, the clerk is, um, the office is a, is a sort of a, a focal point in town hall. It's a place a lot of people need to interact uh, because of the wide range of, of uh, issues and matters uh, before the clerk. Um, for me, uh, I think focusing on elections is important. I think one 
thing we have learned from this whole experience is there are going to be changes to our elections, uh, either driven by the work of the Election Modernization Committee or just in response to this health crisis. So training um, election staff, election workers who are in the polling places so that they can, um, they're confident in the new procedures uh, and they're able to answer questions so that voting goes smoothly. Um, likewise, uh, the information that we provide to residents uh, about uh, town meeting candidates uh, is incredibly important and we have to get that information and contact information uh, out to people uh, in a timely fashion. Thanks very much. Okay, well our mission has, has always been to um, do the best we can for residents. And we would like to, as I said, um, you know, have online payments and the treasurer's office has stated to me that it does cost more for them to pay a lot of their bills, more than 25 cents. Also, we have um, already ordered the uh, election equipment, which, which is part of, it, that's the select board's um, department ordering the equipment, not ours. But the uh, equipment has already been ordered and we were planning to have it for the September 1st primary because we wanted to wait till after the town election so we could get uh, good training for the uh, new people. And that's one of our biggest things. We want to train the workers. They haven't had a lot of training and the state does bring out people and Karen and I have, in the registrar's office have gone to training and this one particular girl is excellent. So that's another thing that we would like to start doing for the election department. And the third and final question in this section will be directed to you, Julie, uh, with Janice next and then Patty third. Um, what is one thing that you would say that the clerk's office already does well and one thing that you think needs improvement? I do think that, that elections uh, are run smoothly in Arlington um, and there is a lot involved in uh, putting on an election. And, and so I appreciate the time and effort that the clerk staff and other town hall staff and, um, and the election workers uh, put into uh, to that important service. Um, I think it is also uh, to the clerk's office credit that there's more information um, uh, posted on the website now than there has been in the past about uh, the candidates uh, for office. Um, and I think that's very helpful in increasing um, public engagement. Um, I'm glad to hear that uh, Janice is making plans for uh, training. I do think there's a lot of work that we can do. And obviously, we have to train election workers on new technology uh, so that they can use the equipment. Um, I would take it farther. I think the town could do a lot more uh, training of election staff. And I would certainly look forward to, to designing these uh, training programs on um, on both voting procedures, I have uh, seen comments from, from uh, residents in the survey about uh, sort of inconsistent answers um, and people get very confused. And so uh, I would certainly want to be sure that election workers have accurate information and confidence that they know the answers. There's, there's, there's always an unusual circumstance. Um, and I think it's important to plan for that. Um, in addition, I do think that Arlington's focus um, as a fairly progressive town is on fair and accessible elections. And so I think we have to look in to anti-bias training to be sure that there are not inadvertent um, conversations and questions that can uh, be uh, scary for voters. Thank you. Uh, Janice, your one minute rebuttal. Thank you, Julie, for the kudos. Um, we, the training should come from the state because the woman who comes from the state knows all of the answers and can answer all of our questions and she's the best person to train, not one of the people in the registrar's or the clerk's office. So that's what we're planning to do. And um, we did get new poll pads for early voting. I don't know if either of you voted early, but we have these new pads that just flip out your name and everything and it moved along much smoother than it had in the past and we're um, using those and we're probably going to get more of them for other elections and i would like to i keep saying this and i know everyone wishes it would happen but i wish we would reduce the number of precincts because that's just it's ridiculous and it's hard to find places for people to go and especially in this time we don't even know where seven and nine are going yet because the um is chestnut manor is closed so the select board and everyone is trying to find room for them. So that's what we're, that's where we're at at the moment. Thank you, Janice. And Patty, one minute. 
Great, thank you. So in terms of the things that the town clerk's office does well, um, I would say that the, the women in the office, um, although new, are very friendly, they're very accommodating, uh, you know, I agree that we do need to provide additional training, whether that's um, on software or procedures, policies, um, but they are a group that's hungry for the tools and um, to make their jobs better, to uh, allow them to provide even uh, better customer service. But they're a, a lovely group um, and I look forward to working with them. Um, you know, the elections, it's, um, you know, a collaboration certainly with the select board's office. Um, I say kudos to Janice, the, the poll pads I thought were uh, great. Um, um, you know, they, we had two of them, they, I, I think they worked great. In terms of the, the uh, enhancements, I'm repeating myself, but it's technology, technology, technology. <laughs> Thank you very much. Moving right into section three, and a, this is a reminder that each of the candidates will have a chance to ask the other two uh, a question. We're going to start with you, Patty, asking the first question, and the order of response will be Julie first and Janice second. Um, Julie and Janice will both have two minutes to respond, and then Patty, you will have a one minute uh, rebuttal or response opportunity. So please proceed. Great. Thank you. Uh, so it's clear that technology and change are needed in the town clerk's office. Describe a project where you managed your employees and introduced a new technology. Describe how you changed employee culture successfully to implement the new technology to your staff. Okay, and Julie, you are first. Okay, um, so obviously I have never been an employee of the town. I've been um, an unpaid volunteer um, managing some pretty complicated projects like the town survey. So that's, um, that's the example I will use. Um, yes, when you are working with um, employees or volunteers and the technology changes, um, there is a lot of work that goes into that. Um, we had to purchase um, new software a few years ago uh, to facilitate scanning and interpreting the data uh, because the old software had become vastly out of date. Um, so yes, it requires um, a lot of research um, and a very, very detail-oriented approach, um, which I'm comfortable with. Um, I really like writing uh, training manuals, and you have to um, you have to be very thoughtful to um, you know sort of the skill set of the volunteers or employees that you're working with. Um, in order to um, give them enough information, the right information, um, be sure you're not giving them information they don't need. If they're doing a step, um, you know, sort of one step in the process, they don't need to be distracted by details from another step. And I'm, I've learned a lot over the years um, working with volunteers on how to be attentive um, to those kinds of changes. Um, and I, I do, I do recognize the importance of, um, of, of sort of <laughs> managing staff um, very carefully, um, particularly with volunteers, they, um, they don't have to come back. Um, and so I feel um, I have a great deal of experience um, making sure that staff are happy. Um, and and, uh, and I, that's important to me. I think teams go better when that's true. Thank you. And Janice, you also have two minutes to respond. Okay. Um, the technology that we have de uh, not developed, but we've gotten in, in the town clerk's office in the past with the help of Adam Karowski was the new uh, dog license um, applications and how to uh, obtain the license and send it in. And we um, send out, now we send it out mostly by email, which saves a lot of money, um, obviously, on postage. So that's one of the first things that we've done. As I said, we're trying to get online payments, but we don't know when that would be happening. And what was your question about the um, the, the staff that you said, uh, Patty? I didn't get that. Uh, so to repeat it, um, just how you have changed employee culture to successfully implement new technology. You mean culture of their their culture? I, I don't I don't know what you mean by that. So the, the work process, the way that people work. Oh, all right. Um, well, actually, what I have done um, is um, 
that I wanted to institute a long time ago anyway was have everyone learn everybody else's job because when I was in the registrar's office, I never went on vacation because there was nobody in there but me. And I didn't want to come back to weeks worth of work, so I just never went away. And I'm trying to um, have all of the girls integrate their jobs with each other and learn. I don't know if that's supposed to be done through the union or not, but the girls don't seem to mind to do it because they don't they don't want to sit there doing nothing some of the days. So that's what I'm trying to do is integrate everybody's job so everyone knows everyone else's when they're not there anymore. That's mostly what I've done. In a, okay. in, there isn't a lot of technology, but I am trying to get it. Okay. All done? Yes. Thank you. And Patty, one minute to respond. Thank you, James. So I think the thing to keep in mind with the town clerks, town clerk, is that this is a leadership management department head level position. Um, so having someone who has an array of skills for technology, for training, for operations is really going to, to be key. I have uh, spent the, the last several years implementing new technologies and also changing business practices. So there may not be a technology involved, but changing the way that people work and doing it successfully. I also, having managed the, the flu clinics for a number of years, I have trained hundreds of volunteers. I've worked logistics in terms of mapping out how the, the clinic should be set up, the flow of people, the flow of information and equipment. So I have a, a, a clear, clear track record of implementing um, new technologies, and I'll bring that to the town clerk's office. Thank you very much. The second question in this section um, will be posed by Julie and uh, answered first by Janice and then by Patty. Voting is important to our town, state, and federal democracy, but we don't see the numbers that we'd like. How would you make it easier and increase registration and turnout, particularly for the people who have difficulty voting in our current system? Two minutes, Janice. Okay, well, I think we've done a lot. The state mandates um, different ways that we can have people register to vote, and we're getting to the point where they're prob we're probably going to be delivering the registrations to their home soon, but um, that's just a joke. But we do have a lot more, um, a lot more ways to have uh, people register to vote. They can vote online. They can vote. The Registry of uh, Motor Vehicles actually practically votes for, uh, registers for them. That is a little problem because we have many duplicates. And we mail out real registrations when anyone calls and gives and we give them information of how to obtain it online. So I think that there are multiple opportunities and the high school does it usually does a um, voting day at, at the school for the, those children and people that are 16 now can actually register and they don't get their registration until they're 18 when they go to the registry. So uh, other than just sending out notices to everybody, I, I think that there's been a um, there has been a lot of registrations. I mean, Karen has done probably a thousand since the last uh, election registering people. She still has pages and pages that she gets every day to register them. So I think that it's it's pretty well known. If it isn't, I don't know why because every agency everywhere in the state gives people the opportunity to register to vote because we get things every day from state offices and different agencies and the RMV. So I really don't know how much more we could do for people to register. Okay, thank you very much. And Patty, also two minutes to respond. Okay, would you mind repeating the question? Yes, uh, voting is important. Uh, I'm gonna make it shorter. Uh, but we don't always see the turnout we'd like. How would you make it easier, increase registration and turnout, particularly for people who have difficulty voting in the current system? Great, okay, thank you. So uh, I think it's a multi-pronged approach. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I think you need to be out in the community. So whether it's um, office hours at the, the housing authority, working with Arlington Eats, um, it's working with the, the Council on Aging, the Senior Association, all the senior housing, um, it's allowing early voting. I think we should pilot same-day voter registration. Um, I think that's a great opportunity to test it out, do it uh, as a pilot, um, maybe in a smaller uh, election. 
I think we push, particularly in this, this election, it's going to be absentee voting is going to be what rules the, uh, the election. Janice is absolutely right about the, the RMV, and there are opportunities for online voting. Um, the, the one thing I will say is that, again, to throw that technology in there, is that, yes, there, the, the uh, clerk's office receives the RMV list in its constant duplications. But what you do is use technology to deduplicate those, and then you just have who the new people are. It'll make that process so much easier and, and, uh, uh, and uh, streamlined. I also think that when it comes to voting in the locations, one of the things we did successfully with the flu clinics is have an ambassador. So for um, that um, spoke uh, whatever the primary language was. So we have some non-English speaking um, residents. So being able to offer information either in multiple uh, languages or have an ambassador there that can do some translation, that worked out really well. Um, so I think it's, it, again, it's a multi-pronged uh, approach. You know, we have 43,000 people, we have about 32,000 people that are registered. Um, you know, what's clear is that the local elections get a low turnout, about 15, 16%. But then when you look at some of the state primaries, our state elections, it goes up 60, 70%. So that's another thing to keep in mind is the local elections have less voters. Thank you very much. And Julie, one minute. Uh, so my perspective um, on this is um, <laughs> Voters tell us over and over again, and it's particularly true in town elections, um, that they they just they won't vote if they don't uh, they don't understand the issues, they don't know who the candidates are, um, and we have to as a community find solutions for that problem. Um, it may not be possible for the clerk's office to uh, you know sort of do all of the work because of the way. Uh, election laws work, um, but I'm very open to and, and dedicated to the idea of um, collaborating. Um, volunteers with Envision Arlington and the League of Women Voters have been trying to fill in that gap to make sure that we're getting information on um, statements from candidates running for town meeting because it's incredibly difficult to find and, and voters aren't going to just do all of the work themselves. We have to help them and that would be a goal of mine. Thank you. And the third question in this section will be posed by Janice and first to Patty, followed by Julie. Okay, I'd like to know how you feel about the UOCAVA voters. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what? you. The UOCAVA voters, that's a big department in the um, town clerk's office. Okay, I, I'm not hearing what the word is. Uh, could you spell it? Is it an acronym? Yes, it's the Uniform and Overseas Citizen Absentee Voting Act. Oh, okay. So military and overseas, um, states do it differently. Um, oh, I'll start again. Okay, the timer just started. So uh, military and overseas voters, um, states do it differently. Some states allow online voting for uh, military folks overseas. They allow for uh, returning uh, ballots by fax uh, or by email. Um, so clearly we do need to have uh, the folks that are overseas be able to uh, still have the, the right to vote. Um, it's kind of an obscure question um, in that um, I'm actually not sure what Massachusetts does, to be, to be honest. I know that states like Alaska, I have been doing some, some research on the uh, online voting, um, do allow uh, for online voting. Um, we seem to technology-wise be a little bit behind, uh, so I'm not sure if we do allow online voting for overseas folks. I'd be willing to bet it's probably more of the mailing them a ballot, uh, email, or uh, faxing them uh, a ballot. Um, I'm not sure even what more to say about that. Okay, thank you very much. Julie, two minutes. Um, yes, it, it, it is a, a slightly obscure question. Um, uh, but I mean, like all questions about voting, it goes to the heart of the issue, which is we have to find solutions to make sure that the people can vote. I mean, that's the fundamental goal of, of all of the rules um, involved um, in, in state and, and local and federal elections. Um, so the, the process um, may need to change. Um, honestly, if, if the process isn't working, if, if the clerk's office believes there's a, a flaw in the system, then we should 
um, we should fight to change uh, the relevant laws. Uh, there's no, there's nothing that says you can't go to the state and ask for changes. I think we're going to be doing that in Arlington a lot, um, potentially based on some of the recommendations from the Election Modernization Committee. Um, so, you know, tackling things um, higher up the food chain is is often a part of the process. Um, I've been to the state house. I've testified at hearings um, on behalf of legislation I believe in. I've lobbied uh, legislators for their vote um, on on issues, um, and I think we have a great uh, delegation. Our state representatives and state senator um, are excellent partners for solving any problem um, related to voting and uh, and making adjustments in Arlington uh, to uh, vote the way we want. And. Thank you very much. And Janice, one minute to respond. Okay, just to let you know, we've had um, online voting for the UOCAVA voters for years, and they do they can email their ballots and their applications into the office, and we can email the ballots out to them. Um, that was the job that I did in the registrar's office, but I do it now as the assistant town clerk because it, it is a lot of work, and there are a lot of out-of-country voters. However, our own town, we can't email the ballot. We have to um, snail mail it, and I have to find out why because it doesn't make any sense to me that we can't email that ballot. So we have had that technology for a long time. The problem is that it would be better if we had both computers on our desks, the state and the regular computer, because you can't email from the state computer. So you have to fill in all the information on one computer system and then go over to your your own computer to email the uh, information to the voters. So that's a technology I'm trying to change by having our computers move to our desks. Thanks very much. And just like that, <clears throat> we arrive at the final section of the debate. Um, each of the candidates will have one minute for a closing statement and the order of those statements will be Julie Brazil, followed by Patty Sautel and then Janice Weber. So without further ado, Julie, one minute for your closing statement. Thanks. Um, so I've been volunteering for nearly 30 years, and most of my energy in that time has revolved around the importance of people feeling connected to their town and empowered to participate. Managing the town survey for Envision Arlington has given me the opportunity to listen to and learn from residents, so I have a clear vision for the potential in the clerk's office. I'd like to work with the Election Modernization Committee to implement changes to voting so that our community is living up to our ideals of small town democracy with informed residents who are given every opportunity to participate in their government. Please visit my website for information on early or absentee voting during this health crisis. You do not have to vote in person if you feel it would be unsafe. I'm first on the ballot. Look for my full name, Juliana H. Brazil, and I'd be honored by your vote on Saturday, June 6th. Thanks very much. Patty. Thank you, James. So I appreciate Julie's volunteer efforts, um, but I do question whether as you look to enter the workforce that your first job should be a department head leadership management position, particularly in these unprecedented times, the collection cycle and the need for technology based change that we so desperately need in the town clerk's office. Janice does have the day-to-day the -day administrative clerical aspects of the department um, but again, this is a leadership management position. Personally, I like Janice. Uh, and if I thought she had the technology leadership and management skills, I wouldn't run against her. If this were a job interview and we were the three candidates, I will say that 100 out of 100 times, I would be selected as the most qualified management person. And the only candidate, again, is the technology, the municipal operations, logistics, and finance experience. The only candidate who's going we'll to have to stop time. there. Sorry about that. Uh, Janice. Well, um, first of all, it's nice to see both of you girls and thank you for ACMI for doing this, uh, this connection. I do think that I can learn a lot of the aspects that need to be learned in technology. I know I'm older and it's a little harder for me to learn, but my office staff is really, one of them is quite adept at that. And uh, speaking of, um, Bilingual, one of our, our office staff is bilingual and she's been a big help in the office with the people. And 
I think the town clerk's office needs to always be remain nonpartisan, so we shouldn't really get into telling um, people what candidates are like. There, there should be a spot where they can find that information, but I don't think they should be asking in the town clerk's office because we aren't supposed to be involved in that aspect of um, elections. And I just hope my experience in the years in the office will um, allow you to vote for me for the for town clerk. And thank you very much. Thank you to all three of you. And that will do it for today's debate. Um, but before we sign off, there are other there are all kinds of well-deserved thanks to be paid. First, again, to the candidates themselves, thank you for participating and for your patience and adaptability with, uh, with the new circumstances. Uh, thanks also to our ACMI crew who are operating very uh, diligently behind the scenes and work prodigiously to make all this possible under the extraordinary current circumstances we all find ourselves in. And finally, thanks to you for taking the time to tune in and inform yourselves in advance of the election that's upcoming on June 6th. You can access the current debate and the debates for other offices that will take place over the coming weeks, as well as candidate profiles in any of several ways. They are airing regularly on our government channel, and you can also access them at your convenience on our website at acmi.tv elections. And lastly, you can also find more useful information about the candidates in the voters guide on the Arlington League of Women Voters website at www.lwva.com. On behalf of ACMI and the candidates for town clerk, I thank you all for joining us. I'm James Milan, and we'll see you next time.